Welcome to the preview show for the Arthur J. Gallagher Challenge Cup 2017. This year's final is between CIYMS and Instonians and is played at the Green in Cumber. In this programme we'll be talking to the two captains, Nikolai Smith from Instonians and Nigel Jones from CIYMS, two legends from a former era in Dixon and Carson Rose who won the trophy in 1964 for Instonians. We also have on the show from the sponsors, uh, Shane Matthews and Gordon Markey, NCU President Peter McMoran. Also at the Green for our preview, we speak with Clarence Hiles. Clarence Hiles is a well-known uh, NCU cricket historian and the president of North Down Cricket Club and also talking to the grindsman at Cumber, Paul Revel. And we also speak to the Northern Knights coach, Simon Johnson. This year's road to the final for both sides. This is a competition that's been going for some 130 years now. The first final played in 1887. Uh, this year it's a final between CIYMS and Estonians. On the way to the final, in the first round, CIYMS beat Donna Cloney by 171 runs. Nigel Jones was 60 not out and 2 for 13 was the man of the match. And there were three wickets each for Matt McGilvery and Trevor Britton. In the second round, they beat the holders CSNI by five wickets. Again, Nigel Jones picking up the Man of the Match award for an excellent opening spell where he took two for seven and Matt McGilvery taking four for 38. In the semi-final, uh, CIYMS beat Muckamore by four wickets. This time again, the Man of the Match was Matt McGilvery, uh, five for 15 and uh, Jacob Mulder took three for six. McGilvery also made 30 not out to win the, the award. By contrast, if you look at Instonian's route to the final, it's probably based more around their batting, whereas CI's was based around their bowling. In the first round, Instonian's won by 10 wickets against Dariaki. Man of the match was James Shannon with 69 not out, and also young James McGee taking 4 for 20. In the second round, uh, an enthralling fixture where they beat North Down by 16 runs, 226 playing 210. And that, the man of the match was the skipper, Nikolai Smith, with 86. Though for North Down, there were notable performances from Ali Shields with 60 and Peter Egan with 46, who at one stage threatened to take the game away from Instonians. In the semi-final, the opponents were Lisburn, and they won by nine wickets. Again, man of the match, Nikolai Smith, 79 not out, and a 59 not out from former Irish international, Andrew White. So I think you can see there, there's a, there's a certain reverse symmetry about how the sides got there. Arthur J. Gallagher, regional, not remote. I now can genuinely say that I am the thorn with two roses. Uh, I'm joined by Estonia's royalty here in um, two of the finest, uh, if I'm not insulting, octogenarians that you could ever meet on my immediate right, Dixon Rose, and beside him is Brother Carson. Uh, both played in the 1964 final and were the first winners of the uh, Cup for Estonians. But I think... Dixon, you've maybe got a, another tale to tell of the, the, the history through 62, 63 and 64 as to why that was even more special. Well, in 1962 we won the league outright under Tom McCormick, beating Warringstown in the last match of the season. In 1963 we ended up bottom of section 1 and relegated to section 2. And then next year we won the cup for the first time. But the, the point about that is the next year we had to win the league to stay in the senior league, which we did. So we actually had four years of uh, four seasons of it. Uh, that, that was maybe the start of what we, we would look at as the Estonians roller coaster? Well, we had a good period. I would like to also point out that we never played in the same league for 10 years in a row. We either up or down and in and out. But yo-yo, uh, yo-yo that's it. But uh, we always played good cricket, exciting cricket. Carson, if I, could turn, if I could turn to you now, I mean, obviously you were what in this day and age the younger generation would call the glove man. Um, and perhaps you were, you were somewhat unfortunate in, in your own career in that you played or were a contemporary of the great Aussie Cahoon. Uh, otherwise, we may have seen more Irish caps appearing against your name. I mean, some recollections from you of those days. Yeah, they were great days. And uh, the cup final that you speak of was probably one of the most exciting matches I ever played in and uh, I had an interesting experience or two in that match. Yeah, I think if we look back to that and, and if we look back to 
the, 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 that era. That era was timeless cricket. I mean, you started on a Friday, finished on a Tuesday. It didn't play and didn't play on the Sunday. Um, you, you know, you, you were in whites. Yes. Uh, it was traditional. Uh, it moved through the eras. You know, then became sixty over cricket. Then it became fifty over cricket. Now we got coloured clothing. We've yes. got white balls. What's your views? Yes. Well, I think it's a better setup today than it was then. I really do. It's very, very good. I'm very envious of it. But there's there's an awful lot of cricket to be played today. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dixon, if I could turn to you, maybe for generations of Estonians, um, the pair of you uh, are, are maybe better known as the curators uh, of, of the old Shane Park. Um, you, 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 shirt front wicket. Shirt front wicket, yeah. You, you, you spent many years doing that. How many years did you guys actually work on the square down there? Oh, I wouldn't, can't remember, 10 years. We are just getting it right when we had to leave, but uh, we moved up to Shaw's Bridge and started over again. Yeah, and, and Dixon, I mean, I think as well as fair to say, you know, if you if you, if you look at yourself in t- in terms of cricket, you've been president of Cricket Ireland, you've been president of the Irish Hockey Union, uh, you've you've you know you've won a cup, you've you've won a league, you've you've also um, you know you've done more things than, than than most people do in a normal lifetime. But here you are, you still take an active interest in what's going on in the game today. I mean, how's it been for you, down the years? Well, I've enjoyed it. I've had interest in Estonian's cricket, naturally, and uh, I go and see them now with, with pleasure. The, the, the bats seem to be bigger. They seem to hit the ball further. But the game doesn't change. You still have to score your runs and take your wickets and your catches. So nothing changes, really, in those three basics. I mean, I think I mean one of the things I would have loved to have done today, but unfortunately circumstances didn't allow. We we possibly look forward to uh, in the cup final, the third generation rose appearing in that final. Carson, obviously you you played in the final and won it. Andrew played in the final and won it, and now potentially we're going to have Ben playing yeah, right. in this final. Uh, so I mean, what advice would you, as the elder statesman of the family, what advice would you be dishing out on Saturday morning? Just play it cool. Take it as it comes. And enjoy it. That's the main thing. I, gentlemen, I'd like to thank you both for coming here today. I think you've both given a lot, certainly from an Estonian perspective, for people a lot of pleasure down the years. And you prepared the wickets that many of us played on. Uh, so <laughs> enjoy your day. And it's great to see you both in such tremendous form. Thank you very much. Arthur J. Gallagher. Specialist, not standard. Delighted now to have uh, Peter McMoran, the president of the Northern Cricket Union, with me. And uh, we're standing beside here the Arthur J. Gallagher Challenge Cup. Peter, obviously this is a magnificent trophy, one. And and two, it probably is the highlight of the cricketing summer. Would that be fair? I think that is fair to say. For the NCU, it is the prestige uh, day of the year. And uh, I think it's the, 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 the match that every uh, senior league player wants to be involved in. Uh, they want to be on playing on cup final day. And uh, it's at North Down this year and there's no better place to actually do that. Uh, and uh, not only do they want to play in it, they want to come home with a winner's medal. Yeah, I think uh, that's true. And, I'm, and as I say, we're now the second year of, of Arthur J. Gallagher as sponsors, equally the second year of your presidency, so all good things come together. But, uh, you know, th- this year your presidency will end and obviously Arthur J. Gallagher's sponsorship will continue. W- what do sponsors, I guess, mean to the Northern Cricket Union? Oh, Arthur J. Gallagher for being absolutely superb. As you say, it is their second year of sponsorship, uh, but they've really engaged uh, with the NCU in supporting the competition. Uh, not only is uh, Shane Matthews and Gordon Markey have they uh, been really uh, helpful in uh, supporting the NCU but they've ensured that uh, their team and their staff members have turned up to nearly all of the uh, preliminary matches to hand out and present the uh, Man of the Match awards and to have a sponsor that's uh, so enthused it is absolutely brilliant from our, our perspective. Yeah, I mean, I think we should maybe turn to Man of the Match Awards because uh, I've been at a couple of games this year and uh, we, we, we've seen you adjudicating Man of the Match Awards. So I really need you to tell me, what does Jonesy need to do in the final to win another one from you? <laughs> well, I, th- I think you may be referring to the uh, semi-final where uh, CI were playing Mockabore and and 
Uh, Jonesy, Matt McGillivray that day took four wickets and and well, that was a quarter final, quarter final, quarter final. Yeah. And yeah. Matt McGillivray took uh, four wickets and uh, Jonesy only took uh, two. Uh, and controversially, you, you may say that he ter- he ended up with the man of the match award. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, he, his his bowling that day was absolutely superb. I think it went, his ten overs went for about twelve runs. I mean, to my mind, it was it won the match. No, I won't argue with you because to be fair, you went through a lot of pain that day, and I was with you as you walked around the boundary. We started off with uh, CSNI two wickets round, and by the time we'd completed our lap, it was all over pretty much. Yes, all, all yes, all yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, winning the man of the match is a big thing. Winning this trophy is a big thing. Um, you know, for you, you're obviously now, I can talk to you as a neutral. Um, where, where do you see this going? You've seen both sides this year. I, I think both sides are, are going to be very competitive. Uh, CI, this is their third year in a row. And Stolians have been in the cup final four times out of the last six. Um, both teams have match winners. And so really, to my mind, you toss the coin as to who could actually win the match in the end of the day. Well, I, I know you probably will be sad to see the fact that it is not going to see SNI um, again this year, but I suspect your dear lady wife will be absolutely delighted not to have to clean this anymore in your house. Well, no, no, she wasn't doing the cleaning. It was me who was doing the cleaning. She was out cutting the grass, Jonesy. Holmesy. <laughs> well, there you have it. You know, sharing sure, sure, sure the duties. <laughs> Peter, thank you very much for your time, and uh, I'm sure y- you, um, like myself, would like to wish both teams all the best in the final and hope that we absolutely. get this. Absolutely, and let's hope we just get a day like this. It would be absolutely superb, not only for the players, but the sponsors as well. Be brilliant. Thanks very much, Peter. Here I am now uh, at the Green in Cumber. Um, a beautiful day here. Uh, Cumber, the home of the 2017 Arthur J. Gallagher Challenge Cup final. I'm delighted to have beside me here on my right hand side uh, Mr. Clarence Hiles. Clarence, well known. NCU historian, uh, the president here at uh, Cumber North Down. I know you're a very proud president. And also, um, you spend a lot of time away from here now and uh, sort of your second home, shall we say, in Barbados. But today it looks like you've actually brought the weather with you, Clarence. It is. Uh, I'm, I'm delighted, actually, I brought the weather. But uh, I have to tell you, my home is Cumber. So it's at the green as well. So it's not necessarily Barbados. Well, that's the answer I actually expected you to give me. But, uh, you know, well teed up. Clarence, I mean, firstly, I'd like to, you know, no better man to give us a background, a history of the uh, the Challenge Cup here. Uh, it's gone through many guises, but, uh, you know, give us a, a rough potted history, if you like, back to the good old days when it first started. Well, <clears throat> pardon me, the, the good old days started in 1887, and um, the, um, the history really has been steeped in tradition, and uh, the Challenge Cup really has been part of that uh, tradition because uh, uh, it has always been the pinnacle of a cricket of a cricketer to play at the Challenge Cup final and uh, so that has been steeped down through the years and uh, over the years um, North Down Cricket Club, um, North of Ireland, Werningstown and to a certain extent um, uh, Woodville as well down the years have uh, dominated um, Lisburn, uh, when I, we, they had a little period there for um, 20 years that they they dominated that as well. So, but outside that, um, that has never really happened until the modern era. And the modern era now involves with uh, in Stonians and um, CIYMS that uh, they now have um, rivaled with uh, North of Ireland, would be a civil service North of Ireland, um, and. Um, Warrenstown and uh, North Down. Well, I think it's something you, that, that you actually touch on there, Clarence. I mean, I suppose if we look at this year's final, people might say it's very much a question of the, the new kids on the block very much. I mean, Estonians have one win back in 1964. Um, you know, that was their first win in, in the, the sort of the last couple of years. They've picked up another couple of wins. They've now three wins. But if you look at, say, CIYMS, they've only won the trophy once in, in 2012. But it kind of is almost like a change in the guard do you feel at the moment? I think so <clears throat> pardon me, I think so because I think the new era of Estonians is that is that era and so are CI as well uh, for a variety of reasons so um, you now have the, the big four as such um, were uh, Weinstein and uh, and again I'm delighted to say have uh, 
uh, stepped up to the table now to, to challenge with them as well. So, um, yeah, it would be the big four, generally speaking. It would be those uh, four clubs that have dominated the Challenge Cup. And, and I mean, again, maybe coming back to just the history of here itself, the history of North Down. You obviously, you're a North Down man and boy through and through. But, I mean, the history of the club itself and, and around us here, that's very much sort of the, the links with the, the Andrews family and the Titanic, all this sort of stuff. We, you would maybe give us a little bit of a background to that as well? Well, the, the Andrews family effectively owned the ground and uh, they were presented with the club um, as a gift. And uh, so the Andrews family at, uh, in the 1900s could actually form a, uh, a team in their own. So during that period that uh, the Andrews 11, which had to be called an Andrews, um, played against the North Down uh, select and invariably uh, whether that was diplomatic or not, the Andrews family normally won. So it, it, was, um, it has been steeped in history around here. And uh, the association now in, in, um, in recent years, uh, the connection with Andrews is, um, obviously has finished in, in that era. But um, for many years, we owe a lot to be grateful to the Andrews family. I think, Clarence, what you've said there in so many words is you never bite the hand that feeds you. Um, you could put it like that, yes. <laughs> Clients, obviously, as uh, the president of the North Down Cricket Club, you are looking forward to the Arthur J. Gallagher Challenge Cup final and looking forward to welcoming everybody here on the Saturday. Yeah, I mean, I'd be delighted to welcome everyone there for the final. Uh, unfortunately, it's a Saturday final instead of a Friday final, but um, because that really has, has meant a, a lot of genuine cricketers on the Friday will be lost to those particular match, or that particular match. So, but um, I, if it's a if the sun shines uh, on that particular day, it's uh, it's beautiful here to see the green and uh, the, it's it's splendid the way it's looking even now. So, it um, I look forward to meeting them. Well, one final question for you. Obviously, I know you still take a very keen interest in cricket here, and you know through the the editorship of the the Ulster Cricketer, and and I know you've been here for a while and you've been watching some cricket here. Um, so I'm going to put you on the spot. Um, what's your tip for for the big day? For the final? Yeah. Um, I think Estonians will win. Clarence, it's been a pleasure. As always, great to see you. Thank you very much for your time, sir. Thank you. Cheers. Okay, we're out here now uh, on the hollow turf uh, at the green. We're actually standing on strip three here, the cup final wicket. And beside me I have Paul Revel. Paul's uh, the groundsman here. Paul, obviously a lot of work goes into this. Just give us a little bit of background to what you've been doing in preparation for the, the cup final. Well, cup final, work of prep, we tend to start sort of a week early. Um, main reason being the weather. You don't know what we're going to get, so we try to stay ahead as much as possible. At the present time, we are ahead. Um, given the forecast for the next three to four days, it's going to be covered tonight, and we'll keep it dry now until until the cup final day is over. So, importantly, we've got the grass off it. There's still a bit of grass on it. Uh, it's firm. There's been plenty of rolling put in. Raymond's been down most nights and mornings rolling away, doing his, his usual stuff. Yeah. <laughs> oh, obviously, you talk about Raymond. We're talking about Raymond Moreland, who's been here for years, unlike yourself. No disrespect, but you obviously come from a background, obviously, as a greenkeeper at uh, Royal Belfast. So you're working with Raymond. I mean, what, 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 do you, what do you bring to the party, if that makes sense? Well, from, from taking over at the green, it was all new to me. Um, I quite like the idea of a new challenge. Um, work of prep <laughs> compared to greens at RB's a lot different. Well, in any course, is a lot different, but I'm doing the opposite and trying to adjust to that was, was difficult at the start. Um, but with Raymond being here, Raymond had the knowledge of work at prep, but it was just the what was under the soil really that needed needed the attention. So we're well on top of it, and Raymond's help has been great. Over the so years. what you're really telling me is Raymond does the hard graft, and you bring the sands to the party. Is that the way it works? I sit in the outfield more, and he sits in the ruler. Yes. <laughs> and I mean, just you know, we're looking around here, and we've been here, and we're looking around. I mean, the place is looking immaculate. You, you know, you're obviously you're cross cutting it, etc., etc. Yes. The new addition this year was the outfield mower, so it's given us the, the chance to actually do that and present well with it, and it sort of does show at the minute. I'm trying to put a cross cut in at the minute, so I've got a week to do plenty of hours of cutting to, to get it to where I want, so we're, we're, we're ahead, like I say, so 
We're looking well, for, for you, weather like this, is this good or is this bad? This is, it, it's good, this. yes, yes. It, it's particularly, we can wet and roll and wet and roll, um, keep the cracks minimal. Um, that's what Raymond has been doing in the mornings. Um, he's been doing that side of things, so when I'm at work, which is great, takes a few hours of me off, you know, yeah. at night. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's it's good. So when it comes to the Arthur J. Gallagher Cup final itself, um, obviously there's a little bit more work to be done here. So what, what's the final preparations look like, Paul? What do you have to do? Final preparations, I prep it like a normal wicket. Um, so currently with the grass off it and running probably two or three days before the cup final, we'll lower it down to six mil. Uh, sorry, to three mil. We're at six mil at the minute. So uh, they'll take a wee bit more grass off and shave it right down a couple of days beforehand and just keep the rolling into it most days. And tell me this, what I I expect, like I always do at North Down, you're going to set this up for a bit of a run fest. Yes. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm going to pull the boundaries out a bit. Uh, the outfield's cut a bit shorter now, so you get plenty more ball roll on the outfield. So I'll spread the boundaries out a wee bit, just to. And tell me this, we we know golf really is the first love, but you know, obviously you're getting involved in the cricket now. Do you have an opinion out of uh, CIYMS or Estonians? Who do you think is going to win? I d- I know from sort of following it over the past couple of years, it will be a good game. Um, it's hard to tell who will win. I think maybe Estonians may be favourites, um, but I'll be neutral. I'll come and watch and, and not sort of want one to win, you know. So, Well, Paul, thanks again. We know you put a lot of work into this, and let's hope it's a great day. Yeah. Thanks no for your time. Cheers. 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 Obviously, we're now looking forward to the uh, Arthur J. Gallagher Challenge Cup final, which this year again will be held at Cumber on the 29th of July. And I'm delighted to have with me now um, Shane Matthews, the Regional Managing Director of Arthur J. Gallagher. And beside me here, uh, Gordon Markey, the Broken Director of Arthur J. Gallagher. Firstly, if I can turn to you, Shane, uh, and ask you, why are Arthur J. Gallagher sponsoring the Challenge Cup? Well, David, this is our second year. Uh, we've, we're a community broker. We're based in Belfast City Centre. We've been around for 50 years. The team is 60 people. Our clients are from Northern Ireland. We're embedded in the community. And we thought that the, the Challenge Cup was a great way of sort of expressing that. You know, cricket is a community sport. And we thought that it resonated really well with what we're trying to do in terms of our business. In terms of that sponsorship, Shane, have you seen something that you would put that as tangible coming from the back of it in terms of people talking about it or you know your, your clients well, yeah there's different aspects to it you know it's a great conversation piece with our clients we've won one or two pieces of new business through the connections that we've made through the cricket uh, the social media profile is really good for us and but like any sponsorship it's it's all about marketing and brand awareness it's hard to measure it precisely but it's been very successful for us we're very pleased and obviously you, you you've been a regular attender at the games yourself this year um, any particular game stand out for you or any particular performance you saw on the way through? Well, I think, I think I've enjoyed, uh, I enjoyed up at Muckamore, first time ever to Muckamore when Muckamore took on CIYMS. Uh, my colleague Jim Miller was presenting man of the match that Best day. Best dressed man. Best dressed man. And 
so I enjoyed that. So, but yeah, it's been great, and the entire team have got involved. You know, we've never had any problem getting volunteers for Man of the Match awards and so on. So, as a team, we've all embraced it. I think too it was a nice day for you at Mockamore too, because you were able to actually spend a bit of time with your uncle, who's a Mockamore fan. My uncle Sam, who's well into his early nineties now, he's a regular at Mockamore, so I sat beside him and reminisced with him. So that was that was great. Gordon, coming to you, you you're kind of the guy who's been more, shall we say, hands on. If it, I don't mean in a disrespectful way, but you've looked after uh, the various clubs, the relationship with the union. As uh, Shane has said, it is the second year. Has it, has it got easier as time's gone on? Oh, definitely. Definitely. You get to know all the people. Um, the first year, um, everybody was so welcoming. That's stayed exactly the same in year two. Not just for me at the games I've been to, but for all the colleagues who have been to virtually all the games. And I think, too, it's fair to say you're not just a sponsor who says, you know, there you go, get on with it. You, you've been doing a lot of thinking around your Man of the Match awards and that kind of thing as well, and you're trying to do different ones for each round. Well, we, li we like to do a different uh, trophy for each round, and uh, we'll get some of the same players are receiving the, the Man of the Matches, like uh, Nigel and Nikolai there uh, previously. But, but yes, we like to like to do a little bit of thinking about it, and uh, thoroughly enjoy that as well. I think it's fair to say, too, you've added a little touch of your own in, in terms of, of the, the Man of the Match awards. I know your son Stuart now is becoming quite a regular tender. He likes to give them out. Yes, uh, brought him down to the quarter and semi-finals. And uh, you know, Peter, uh, the first one, and then uh, Robin of the second one, Brian Clement, and midway the lads day with day. So you can't get working in your man. Absolutely, the, the human touch. Hey, Final sort of question I'd like to come to both of you. Obviously, when it comes to the, the sponsorship, the sponsors are strictly neutral in terms of who's going to win the trophy here. But I think maybe there's a little bit of a conflict of interest here in this one with the uh, Estonians against the uh, CIYMS. And I think Stuart kind of gives it away on your side because yeah. he, he kind of tends to come out with an Estonian's He does, one. and he'd yeah. probably do that at the final as well, I would imagine. But um, I'm impartial on the day to a degree, but you know, your heart's your heart. So you're looking for a CI win, and that's what you're saying, basically? Yeah. Okay. Now, o over to you, Shane. I've, I think I've, I've seen, I've seen no, you. No, I think there was a fair balance. You know, as a company, we're totally impartial. The fact that Gordon might have slight leanings one way and I have slight leanings the other, I think they balance each other out pretty well. How's it going to work out on Monday morning, lads? Well, well, we'll see who wins on Saturday week, that's, that's for sure. Well, one of us may be in late. <laughs> well, fair enough. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Really appreciate thank your you. time. And equally, we appreciate your sponsorship of, of this group. Thank, thank you, David. Pleasure. Thank you. Arthur J. Gallagher. People, not process. Delighted now to have on the show the uh, Northern Knights coach, Simon Johnson. Simon, good to see you here. Um, you and this uh, young lady here have uh, an interesting relationship as well from your playing days. Uh, you won the trophy and appeared in a, a losing side as well. Do you want to give us a little bit of your history? Yes, uh, 98, we were lucky enough to win it. Uh, that was the time Down Patrick, unfortunately, had been burnt down and the trophy uh, had to get completely rebuilt from memory. Uh, so we were presented with another cup, which still resides at Woodville, <laughs> pride of place. Uh, so g good memories and ba bad memories, but uh, that was the days when there were two-day cup finals. So a long time ago. A long, long time ago. And suffice to say that this was uh, basically a pool of smelted metal then, basically, when you won it. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, obviously you have fond memories of a player, but now obviously as a coach, you coach a lot of the players who are going to be appearing in the Arthur J. Gallagher Challenge Cup Final. So, I mean, you know, give me your thoughts on, you know, the players that you have from CI and the players that you have from Estonians. Well, look, uh, great pitch for a start, which will, which, which will make a proper game of cricket. Um, North Down will obviously prepare an absolute road, as usual, and... Um, Real two really evenly matched teams. Uh, you've got two really good seam attacks, and you've got two teams that, when they fire with batting, it's pretty spectacular. But you could argue that they're both a little top heavy on their batting. So I mean, it's very, very evenly matched. Uh, a lot of Knights players involved. Um, you got James Shannon, obviously, who's in just on fire this year with a bat. Uh, but you've also got Jacob Mulder, and then the match winner for uh, C CI. So it should be a really interesting game of cricket. Yeah, and you've got some of the younger guys coming through as well. That uh, maybe some of them in the night side, but some of them you're looking at. We think of the likes of uh, John Matchett, 
Um, you know, he's obviously started to feature in your plans now. So, what's your thoughts on some of the young talent that's coming through from both sides? Well, look, that's the big thing that certainly in the NC and the Knights we need. Uh, we've got a pretty established group of senior cricketers, but we need the younger guys kicking on and coming through. Uh, matchy has been brilliant this year. He's always had the ability. Uh, it's just a bit of belief with John. And this year, he's, he's finally starting to realise his potential and starting to play really well. We've got uh, another guy, young Robinson, uh, played an emerging game for me. and was pretty impressive as well. So CI are obviously doing some, some, some good things behind the scenes with those younger guys coming through. Well, you've already mentioned uh, James Shannon, but you also have the likes of Nikolai Smith and Nathan Smith from Estonians. And I know as well, young wicketkeeper James Metcalf has been uh, making some waves around the game. Yes, listen, uh, James is someone uh, we have a lot of time for and we think he's got a big future. Uh, difficult one for him. He's at that age where he's in a very sort of experienced side. A lot, lot of strong characters there, you know, but that's good learning for him, I think. Um, very good seam attack there, so he's keeping that every week. It'll stand him in really good stead. Uh, his younger brother as well, Ollie, is someone we've just picked in the Irish 15s, uh, another keeper batsman. So again, Estonians have a real production line coming through there as well. Um, they have a young guy, I don't know if he'll feature in the final, but James Hunter is someone who's also in the Irish 15s. So look, a lot of, lot of ability in the two teams, a lot of obviously big established gun players, as I would call them, but there's also some really good young players coming through. Now you've dodged the question, you've dodged the bullet so far. I'm going to put you on the spot. On the day, who do you think edges it for you? Uh, for me, Nigel Jones is key. Uh, if Jonesy plays well, CIYMS have a massive chance. Uh, Instonians, in my opinion, are the better team. Uh, they've got more bases covered. But uh, there's some real match winners at CI. That's what I say. It's honestly a great game. So you're basically not predicting anybody there? I think Instonians will win. Thank you, Simon. Arthur J. Gallagher, Community Insurance Broker. Now we're looking forward to the Arthur J. Gallagher Challenge Cup Final, which, as we know, takes place in Cumber on the 29th of July. I'm delighted now to have the two skippers with me, uh, beside me here, Nikolai Smith from Estonians, and uh, on the other side we have Nigel Jones from CIYMS. Nigel, if I can turn to you first, obviously for you it's a special day, uh, maybe more so, four in a row. Yeah, a special day. Um, I guess not too many times we get the opportunity to maybe play as, as many in as many Challenge Cup finals and to have four in a row, it's probably something I'll reflect on in years to come and hopefully it'll be another good day. Nikolai, on the way through to, to the final and the run through to the final, obviously you've been in good form yourself. Like Nigel, you've picked up two Man of the Match awards. Does that give you any added confidence going into the final? Um, well, it's just it's good to be scoring runs and doing well. It, just, it does help the confidence in any game that you're going into. So, but it, finals completely different. You know, it's it's a one-off, and as I said to you before, form kind of goes out the window. Um, you know, if you get a good ball or anything like that, there's nothing you can do. So, just looking forward to it. And I think it's just whoever stands up on the day, you know, and gets a big score does well with the ball. So it should be good. Really looking forward to it. And it'll be a, hopefully we get the weather like this, and it'll be a good wicket. Hopefully. Indeed. Nigel, turning again to you, obviously one of, the, one of the major differences between the two sides as we look at it is maybe the, the lack of professional on the Estonian side and obviously your professional Matt McGilvery who's been in excellent form especially during the cup run this season. Yeah, I, th I think that's, that's probably a good point. Um, I think probably what counterbalances that is that you've got six or so guys um, in the Estonians team that are all sort of in a, I guess a first class team now and squad in terms of the Northern Knights and Obviously, that's where we're hoping the game goes, and there's, some, there's certainly quality in that team. So, you know, just because maybe we have a, a pro, I guess, on the on the team sheet, and maybe they don't, I think the, the quality is there anyway. So we don't really see that as a as a massive advantage, purely just by having a pro. You probably know the question that's coming, Nick, like, because you and I have talked about this during the course of the season. For you, you don't see it as a question of Estonians being without a professional. You see it as an opportunity to give young players, your own young blood, a, a chance. Yeah. It it just gives another guys opportunities, you know. We just hopes we don't we, we don't lose guys um, by bringing a pro who could be taking their spot. You look at someone like Ben Rose who won us the game at Carrick. You know, came in and got 20. Would he have done that if we'd had a pro? Probably not. Would he be bowling 10 overs a weekend? Probably not. James McGee the same. Um, and it just it kind of it's just there for the for the more senior guys to stand up and score more runs more often rather than just turn around going oh well it doesn't matter you know we've got a pro here to do it and you know he's paid to do it so we shouldn't have to do it so it kind of just makes the onus on us then rather than on a pro um, sort of thing and it gives young guys an opportunity to play and you know that they're really enjoying it which is which is good. 
Well, obviously, you both have recent experience of cup finals, so this is not a fresh experience for you. So, Nigel, maybe give me your thoughts on what goes through your head on the morning of the final, the run-up to the final. What you be looking today? Um, yeah, I, th- I think you know it's it's quite a different feeling probably for a number of blokes in in the team. And for me, I guess it's about just it's, a, it's another game of cricket. It's another opportunity to win a game of cricket. And quite often, if you can be relaxed with that mindset going in, and you try and get the, the rest of the boys on a similar sort of wavelength, you know, at the end of the day, you don't want them to be doing anything different than they normally do in terms of their routines. Um, and then going out there and just expressing themselves and, and backing themselves when they get the chance. So I've pretty much back back myself off that motto as well, try and be relaxed. And it's the process for me. It's not so much the outcome. If I can nail the process, then we'll we'll get the outcome. Nikolai, similar question to you, but obviously you've got that slightly different experience in that you have got maybe potentially in your in your lineup four, five, six younger guys who haven't been in a in a cup final before. What's your message going to be to them? Um, you'd have to look back. I'd say a couple of them have actually played. We, we, I mean, I've been involved in two. We've lost both, unfortunately, but I've been involved in two. And I think Jones hits the nail on the head. There. You've got to look at it as just another game of cricket. If you come out and you kind of tense up and you just you know you worry too much about the day. As, and rather than just worry that you know if I stick to my processes as Jonesy says you know it'll probably go right so you know the guys that do the process well don't get too overwhelmed by the whole situation of the day the crowd um, and just play with that freedom those are the guys that will probably come out on top more often than not Final question for you on this one then is match winners Nick if you could maybe look at match winners on CI and Nigel if you could look at the match winners yeah. from Estonians um, CI CI Obviously, they've got a serious side, so you know, they've got match winners all down their lineup. You know, Doc, Matt has shown the league game that he can score runs and score runs quickly. There's Jonesy, you know, the pro, Jacob Mould, who's obviously an Irish cricketer. Um, and then, you know, with the ball, if AC turns up on his days, you know, he can be devastating. Um, so, this match winners just scattered throughout their lineup, which makes it much makes it much tougher because anyone could turn up on the day and win their game, win them a game. So, you know, we don't really look at them and say, you know, he's a match winner, you know, he's a potential match winner. We just kind of take it and try and learn from the games we played against each other and, and try and just block their strengths and not go to their strengths. Um, you know, if we do that and make it difficult for them, you know, we should hopefully get them not doing well. And if, you know, if they come out on top, fair play, because it means they've worked really hard to, you know, counter attack, counter our plans to them. Okay. Nigel? Um, I think uh, similar probably to, to Nikolai in terms of probably a number of, of guys who have the potential if they, if they turn up in the right headspace and, and can know what they're trying to do on the day from Stone's point of view. I guess a key one probably that we, we look at is probably James Shannon. Um, he tends to, to probably offer the, the acceleration in, in that uh, batting lineup. but um, you know, I'd be remiss if I wasn't mentioning Andrew White and Nikolai probably. I think for us that there's three key men there. I'm sure there's a few others that can pitch in. But yeah, we'll be looking to try and make some, some progress into that top three or four, and I think that will instead put us in good stead. Nigel, thanks very much for that. I think you should know that whilst you were saying that, Jim Shannon was actually listening in the background to see what you had to say about him. <laughs> thanks very much, gents. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Arthur J. Gallagher, Community Insurance Broker. That completes our preview programme and I'd like to thank everybody who took the time to appear on this today. Just a reminder as we finish that the Arthur J. Gallagher Challenge Cup Final will be taking place on Saturday the 29th of July at the Green Cumber. Let's hope we have a wonderful day and that the weather holds.